We're going for round three. Nikhil stepping out there to the centre of the ring, very confident. Not surprising that he should be at this point. Round he three. Must be leading by a very, very large margin over Bart at now. Again opening up with some powerful roundhouse and again bringing Bartlett down to the canvas. They see the towel has been thrown in there by Bartlett's trainer, so that's it, they've had enough for, for tonight. Cash Gill there, the winner by knockout. Okay, well, Bartlett didn't seem to have been too badly hurt anyway. There's a good sporting gesture from both fighters. Ladies and gentlemen, here to present the trophies for tonight's fight, Mr. Paul Mason from Southside Wine Bar and Restaurant, South East London. Oh, that was a, a nice fight for Cash Gill. Okay, there's the star fighter this evening. Seven times two minute rounds. And there's Peter Sugarfoot Cunningham, world light and super lightweight champion, weighing in at 60 kilograms. Peter is from the Jet Center, California, USA. Arguably one of the greatest fighters fighting on the international circuit at the moment. Peter trains under the well-known and well-respected world champion Benny the Jet Ukides. And his opponent tonight, Lance Lewis, the British super lightweight champion, weighing in at 61 kilograms. Lance has taken this fight against the current world champion in order to help him push himself into the ratings in the highest possible place that he's likely to get with just one fight. and super lightweight champion. Peter Cunningham originally hails from St. Lucia in the Caribbean Islands. Lived most of his life in Edmonton, Canada and has moved on down to California training in the Jet Center gym in order to get the maximum benefit from his training. And also, because as he tells me, there's just that much more fights going on in that area. Actually fought an amateur boxing fight only a week ago, Peter. So he should be very sharp for this fight, uh, this fight tonight. Just touch your gloves there and Lance Lewis and Peter both go back to their corner. Ready for the start of the Lance is next professional boxer. He was ranked number three in Britain, number ten in the Commonwealth. Lists amongst his conquests as the the former world lightweight champion, Ken Buchanan. He's been fighting in kickboxing for a long time now. Actually started when he was 16 years old. And I believe he's now around about 25. And 
cunning of this showboat a little bit there. Cunningham is a performing arts student. He starred in a number of films. His latest that's been shown in this country is the very popular No Retreat, No Surrender karate movie. Also lists amongst his talents dancing and singing. So we've got quite an all-rounder here. needs to be much explanation as it always catches Lance Lewis nicely there. Lance was just about to fit and claim them caught in very cleanly. Very cleanly with a pot sweep there. Yeah, as I was going to say, doesn't need very much explanation as to the reason why he's called Sugar Pot anyway. Just take a look at his kicks and they'll tell you that. And the referee there is warning Peter for putting his foot sweeps a little bit high. And with the contact karate organization rules, the foot sweep has got to connect below the bulge of the calf muscle. And the referee considers that to be a little bit too high there. Okay, that was a, a reasonable round one. Remember these lads have got seven rounds to go in all, so obviously neither of them are gonna go, go too hard in the opening rounds. And I'm sure we're going to see some really good action as we get into this fight. This would be Lance's, Lance Lewis's third fight in the last few months. Before then he had something like about a two, two and a half year layoff. His last opponent was Ray Kumar. From Denmark, who he well, totally annihilated, really, knocking him down first with a roundhouse kick to the head, and then finishing on him off later with a uppercut to the body. Ray Kuma appeared on paper to have been a worthy opponent for Lance Lewis, considering the fact that he had actually knocked out the reigning European champion at one point. But uh, he found Lance to be just something else. It'll be interesting to see whether Lance can repeat something like that with a person of the class of Peter Cunningham. Lewis catching Cunningham there with a good left hook, but Cunningham shown his experience by rocking to the side and absorbing the power out of that punch. And a good combination exchange there from both fighters. Cunningham attempting the wheel kick there to the head of Lance Lewis, which sails high over the top of him, losing his balance and ending up on the canvas. Won't like that very much, cramping his style. And again, another attempt at real kick. Cunningham doesn't seem to be able to stay on his feet. And maybe he's got something on the cell of his foot causing him to slip a little. And Lance coming in there with a double round house kick to the body of Cunningham. Both of these fighters using the ring well, moving around, attacking with very stylish combinations. Okay, and that's the bell for the end of the round. Cunningham going back to his corner, raising his hands. Seems to be thinking that he's won that round. And moving on now. 
to round three. Both of these fighters so far showing an excellent style. Cunningham has shown himself to be slightly more flamboyant in his kicking techniques than Lance Lewis, but Lance nevertheless has been staying right on in there with some good strong combinations. I think Lewis is going to have to go a little bit more though if he wants to try and take the play away from Cunningham. And there's Cunningham playing around a little bit there and showboating. Both of these fighters really enjoy their sport. Plenty of aggression that they put into it, but no, no animosity between them. To them, it's it's just a game. It's something that they enjoy. It's kind of trying to entice Lewis to make a mistake and attempt them to take him with combinations as he comes in with the attack. I think Lewis is a little bit too experienced though for that sort of thing. His professional boxing career will have allowed him to have seen all that sort of thing. As Lewis jumps in there with a jumping round pass kick to the head of Peter Cunningham. That's one of Lewis's specialities. He does that in most of his fights. That was a good round there for both the fighters there. Okay, bringing them out now for round four. So far we've seen three rounds of very action-packed entertainment for these two fighters. <laughs> Cunningham having a little bit of a dance there. And attempting another foot sweep to Lance Lewis's front leg. Shows himself to be a very versatile fighter, Peter Cunningham. Certainly no shortage on his repertoire of techniques. Another jumping back kick there from Cunningham, but Lance just steps back out of the way and it sails harmlessly past him. Oh, and that was a very, very nicely caught foot sweep there, just tripping Lance down to the canvas. Chess these two fighters uh, just try and tag each other, trying to outthink each other, just waiting for for one to make a mistake. So give them that chance to capitalise. And there's a attempted spinning back kick there from Cunningham, just slightly caught the hip, hip on of Lance Lewis. Didn't seem to do any damage though. That was a very good round. Okay, and where we go for the fifth round. Those fighters there were up on their feet before the well before the well the bell was rung. Or raring to go. Lance Lance Lewis seemed to be wanting to open up early in this round. 
Cunningham again soon if he wants to do a little bit of dance in the plans. He's brought a good sense of humour into this fight. Generally speaking, you tend to see British fighters tend to be a lot more serious in their fighting, but Cunningham is Cunningham is likely to bring in a little bit of jokiness along with it. Not to say that that's made him any less dangerous at all, as Lance has certainly found out so far. The referee just again warning Cunningham for foot sweeping a little bit too high. That's his second warning for that. If he does it again during the fight, he's quite liable to end up having the points taken away from him for it. Attempting another jumping back kick to the body of Lance Lewis, but once again, Lance just moves out and keeps him just that bit out of distance. And Lewis catching Cunningham just under the chin there with a side kick. It was only just a little clip there and didn't do too much damage to him at all. Cunningham's very good at this breaking away out of pinches and catching Lance with some combinations of punches. Well, Cunningham raised his hand there and I think rightly so, that was, that was definitely his round. Round six. Alright, moving on now to the sixth round. There's two rounds to go. Well, I've got Cunningham comfortably ahead so far on my card, so with only two rounds to go, Lance has either got to win these last two rounds with a very large margin, otherwise he's going to have to look for a knockout. Oh. <laughs> Cunningham again giving a little bit of the old showmanship there with Lance on the floor. Neither of them were hurt in there, it was just a clash that caused Lance to slip to the canvas. Again, both, both fighters trying to a game of chess here, just waiting for one to attack so that they can form a counter against them. Coming from lashing out with that front leg roundhouse kick to the head of Lance Lewis. And then coming from doing a little bit more showboating, he's done this throughout the fight so far. Cunningham attempts another jumping back kick to Lance Lewis. Final round. There you go. Seventh and final round. Well, if Lance is going to do it, he's going to have to do it all in this round because so far I've got Cunningham ahead by at least five of the last rounds. So if he's going to win this fight, it's going to have to be by knockout. Cunningham only, only has to stay in there, only has to keep Lance off in order to win this fight. Uh, Cunningham given a little bit of break dance in the technique there, I think. And another spinning wheel kick there from Cunningham. I don't think he's going to play any, any game of running away from Lance Lewis for this last round. 
he's shown himself to be too good a fighter for that. And Lance Lewis hanging on there, I think that's one thing he doesn't need to do. He doesn't, doesn't want to do it all in this round. He needs to get in there and try and take it all away from Cunningham. He doesn't have time to just clinch like that. Lance there with that spinning back kick and putting him on the canvas. No arm done though, and then on the way they go with the fight. Golden Lance on there. And he's throwing a double roundhouse tip, one to the body and one to the head. And there's the final bell, so it's over to the judges' decision now to decide this one. Yeah, piece of sugar for Cunningham, the winner, as I expected. Good evening ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Eastway Sports Centre in Leighton East London for another action-packed night of entertainment brought to you by the Contact Karate Organisation. The sport you're about to see is called kickboxing and as we get into the first fight I'll explain the rules of the sport to you. Our first fighter into the ring this evening, Ian Boo, weighing in at 99 kilograms from Warrington Karate Club. This is going to be a super heavyweight contest. Three two-minute rounds in the C-class division. Uh, mistakes there on the which corner the uh, Ian went to. He's over in the red corner, and his opponent there in the blue corner, now Phil Gardner from Goso Kempo Club, weighing in at 104 kilograms. Two very big men here, so you should, should see some very powerful techniques coming from them. Both of these men actually work as doormen on steward in the doors and the nightclubs. So they certainly uh, are quite used to getting themselves into fights, I should imagine, doing that sort of job. Okay, so the referee's given them the, the final talk to. And the fighters are back to the corner and ready for round one. Phil Garden with a good right cross. And some combinations of kicks now coming from him. Again, Booth throwing some powerful roundhouse kicks down to the 
into the midsection of Gardner. Gardner carrying a fair bit of excess. Oh, and Booth caught Gardner there with a, a red a left hook to the side of the head, putting him on the canvas. Straight back up again, though. He doesn't seem as if he's been too, too shaken by that. Booth coming in now for the kill. Gardner carrying quite a bit of excess weight down. Booth again catching him with some punches. Oh, and again he's put Gardner back onto the canvas. Gardner's looking very rocky on his feet there. And again he nods to the referee to say that he's okay to carry on. And Booth again attempts to finish his man off. Turn his back there, the referee ought to be stepping in there if he, the man turning his back to him. And he's on the car, canvas again there, Booth putting Gardner back down again. And that's it, Gardner I think is out on this one, I don't think that he's going to be able to continue on after that. No, he's cornerman in the ring, I think the referee's decided to stop that fight. Not too soon at all either in my estimation. And there's Booth, a very definitive win there in the first round. And a good sport and gesture there from Gardner and Booth. Well, the winner within the first round from Warrington, Ian Booth. And he sees the winner's trophy from the referee, Bob Ryan. There. He would be very pleased with himself dealing with his opponents that quickly. In the next fight will be again a C-class fight over three times two minute rounds. So will be between John Woodbine from the Taisu Kundo Club and Tony Wakeland from Jakab Kung Fu Club. Both of these fighters are matched in the light heavyweight division. And here's the first of the two fighters. This is Tony Wakeland. Introducing in the red corner to the Tyson Stone Club, John Cuddy. I beg your pardon, John Woodfine. And in the blue corner from Jackass Cup Club, Club, Tony Wakeley. You said both of these fighters weighing in it. The same weight, 81 kilos. This fight, a C-class, three times two minute rounds in the weight division, light heavy. Referee Bob Riley is giving the lads the last instructions. Usually he'll be telling them about break when he says to and go back to a neutral corner when he stops the fight, that sort of thing. Line opens up there with a side kick to the midsection of his opponent and gets a return of a combination of punches. Wakeling looking like he wants to get in close in order to use his fists. That's what Vine is. Using a few more kicks than he is at the moment. No, that's not, not too good though. He's not banging the floor, but disgusted with himself, I think. Uh, turning his back and then going down so early in the round. Open 
still. Oh, Woodbine we'll catches Rayton there with a spinning back fist and definitely being hurt there, definitely. Looks like he might not even be able to carry on. No, and the referee has stopped the fight. Well, there's was a there's was one of the most powerful techniques in the book there, the spinning back fist. Quite a few fighters have caught that one and that's put an end to the fight that they've been in. So that was a good win there for John Woodbine after being put down on the canvas. He's come back to knock his opponent out. He'll be very pleased with himself there. And a rather disappointed Tony Wakeley. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. That concludes the first part of our programme this evening. And here we have a replay of that spinning back fist. And there it goes, catches him right under the jaw. You can really see that that took him, took him well by surprise and right off his feet. He got to even managed to get up there, I think. Also well, the next fight this evening will be a B-class five times two-minute round bout in the welterweight division. And we've got the Trevor Ambrose from the Leicester Karate Club. And he'll be going in against Colin Barrett from the Woodlands Gym. Colin fought on the last televised promotion against the, against the Danish, Danish champion, champion Sten Jurgensen. And we'll be seeing a little bit more of that later on in the programme when we've got a little bit of a replay of that fight. So here we have coming up to the ring now is Trevor Ambrose. Trevor's a very experienced fighter, been fighting now for more than five years. Recently fought the number two in the welterweight division, that was Derek Hidden. Coming to the ring weighing at 67 kilograms. And Colin Barrett coming in at a rather heavier weight there, 70 kilograms. Barrett's a very tough fighter, good boxer. Here we have a clip there of his earlier fight with Sten Jurgensen. They say he stepped off a grade to fight this this Danish champion. Originally, he'd been matched against a, a fighter from Walsall by the name of Gary Osborne. But for some unknown, unknown reason, that chap didn't turn up. So Barrett decided that he would step in and take the fight on. It's a very hard fight for him, but he endured to the end, and at the end, the kick count added up and we found that the Danish champion was some 15 kicks down and that's the reason why Barrett got that win. One point being taken away for each kick short. Okay, so back to the fight of tonight and Barrett faces his opponent there, Trevor Ambrose. It's an important fight for both of these fighters because it's a rateable fight. fight. That means that whoever wins this will move on in the ratings to eventually be able to challenge against the British welterweight champion. Seems to be something wrong there over in Ambrose's corner. I'm not too sure. I can't quite see from here exactly what it is that seems to be holding things up. I think somebody had forgotten to get the gun shield now. We'll go anyway with round one. Ambrose tends to be a very relaxed fighter. Whereas Barrett, on the other hand, tends to like to get in there and really have a go. So it'll be interesting to see just what happens in this fight. And so Barrett opening up there with some combinations of punches, almost catching Ambrose with a left hook to the jaw. And 
Fernando's coming back against Barrett there, pursuing him in for the corner. Uh, not managing to get much mileage out of that there. There's an attempted axe kick there from Ambrose. Oh, what a good right cross catches Barrett straight into the side of the head. Doesn't seem to have shaken him too much though. and he comes in with a good roundhouse kick to the midsection I beg your pardon Ambrose to the midsection of Barrett and the referee just wiping the gloves of Barrett there just making sure that there's no dirt or anything picked up off the canvas as he slips over there catching Barrett with a low kick the referee just telling him to get them up a little bit higher I couldn't quite hear the bell over the crowd noise there but obviously it was wrong so that's the end of round one well I'd definitely give that round two to Barrett Ambrose as I said is a very relaxed fighter but I think he, he tended to be a little bit too relaxed during that round he's given it away but there are another four to go so we'll just have to wait and see how it picks up as he gets on Colin Barrett's trainer there Mike Stahl having a word with his fighter don't think he has to tell Barrett very much though he's an experienced pro he'll know just what to do Round two. Very pale looking fighter, Colin Barrett always. Comes into the ring tending to look as if he could do with going away and getting a centre. Still by the way of he's fighting tonight, it's obviously he's in tip-top condition. Whatever he looks like. And Ambrose again just dropping his guard and showboating around though. Not like to do too much of that because Barrett's just still piling up the points while he's playing around. And attempts a, a wheel kick to the head of Barrett, which just falls a bit short. Catching Ambrose there with her left hook, with Ambrose raising his hands up and shaking and saying, No, that didn't hurt me. And he must have a pretty tough chin if that really, that really is the truth, because that was quite a good hard punch that he caught him with there. Ambrose still. Not getting in there and connecting enough for my liking. If he wants to make a serious attempt at beating his opponent, then he's going to have to do a little more than that. Uh, that's the end of round two, and I've certainly got Barrett clearly ahead on those first two rounds. And whether Ambrose is fighting at the moment, I think Barrett must feel he's just in there for a sparring session.
Jim Barrett's corner, and having a quiet chat to him in the corner there, planning out the strategy for the next round. brings the lads together to touch gloves. <laughs> Barrett again attempting to catch Ambrose with that left hook that he's thrown quite a lot and he's caught him with it just then. He didn't seem to have had too much effect of it on him though. About trying to catch Ambrose again with his side kick and just missing up getting him with that left hook again. There's a minimum of eight kicks required from each fighter in each round. All punches and kicks must be above the belt. All normal boxing type punches can be used with the addition of the kickboxing spinning back fist, which you'll see thrown from time to time as you get to watch kickboxing more regularly. And the fight is really mixing it up there, but I didn't quite see exactly what happened there, but the referee obviously saw something and warned. Ambrose for it. I think that was a possibly a low kick. And Barrett comes straight back in there after his man there. Catches uh, Barrett with a bit of a low kick and then to the thigh. Surprisingly, the referee didn't warn him for that actually. Didn't seem to have caused him to any, any trouble there. Well, Ambrose is still looking very relaxed in his corner, but that's not surprising. He hasn't really done an awful lot in this fight so far. I say I've got Colin Barrett quite comfortably ahead on points. Ambrose has got the ability to step up a bit and start taking it back, but he's going to have to decide to push himself a little bit, otherwise he's going to give this fight away. Barrett, on the other hand, he just needs to keep going as he's been going for the last couple of rounds, and he's going to have this one in the bag. Okay. And where we go then for the fourth round. Two rounds to go. But it's a very compact fight. It doesn't tend to do an awful lot of flashy kicks. Keeps to basics of side kicks and roundhouse kicks relies a lot on his good boxing ability. And Ambrose trying to jump in kick there to Barrett's head, but missing by quite a fair old distance. Just pushing his leg out into the face of Barrett. Barrett. Seems to be much point in doing that, really. And after he stopped the fight for a second, it's like the the tie on Ambrose's foot pad has come undone. And the referee signals to continue the fight on.
set of equipment they use in these fights, just as the gloves which you quite obviously see in the foot pads on the feet, which are called a kicker. One of the CKA rules, fighters have an option of wearing shin guards as well, it's entirely up to themselves, they don't have to wear them. And Barrett catching Ambrose there with a good jab to the jaw as he was coming in with some kicks. And there's the the end of the fourth round. Well again I've got Barrett still comfortably ahead. So when Ambrose comes out for the next round he's going to think he's going to be having to look for a knockout. And the way he's been going on so far uh, I think that that would be a rather tall order. Still, it's been done before. He's a consistent fighter though, Trevor Ambrose. He's fought most of the best fighters on the circuit in Britain so far. Just touch gloves, get ready for the final round. Mm, interesting to see now Barrett's plan of attack, whether or not he's happy enough just to see this round out and take the fight on points, or whether or not he's going to try to finish Ambrose off in style. And Ambrose opening up there with a nice combination there of roundhouse kicks and wheel kicks. Ambrose seems to be trying the you know, Muhammad Ali type technique of bouncing around using the ring to maximum advantage and trying to catch his opponent off guard with long range jabs but it hasn't really worked for him that well so far against Barrett but it's very good at parrying away those blows and of course he's been piling up the points himself the referee's stopping the fight again that problem with that the tie on Ambrose's kicker keep on coming undone go again. And Barrett will catch an Ambrose with a right hook. Once again, Ambrose has shown a good toughness there, taking that and just coming back and saying, no, you didn't hurt me with that one either. Again, Barrett catches him with a left hook to the jaw. And again, he catches him again. I, I think that Ambrose is being hurt by these punches. He's just got a very good poker face and he's not letting anybody see it. Well, that's the final bell then. I don't think there can be any disputes as to who is the winner of that, uh, that fight. And it's got to go to the judge's decision, so we'll have to wait for their scorecards to be returned to the, the score table and be tallied up before we'll have the announcements. And the referee Bob Riley going around to each judge to collect his score ballot from them. Just while we wait, the scoring under the contact karate organisation rules is what is called the 10 must system. That is to say that each fighter starts off with 10 points and points are deducted from the loser of each round. Generally speaking, if it's just a close decision, it'll be 10-9. And if a, the loser loses by a, a larger margin, it would usually go no further than about 10-7. Fighter, if he gets knocked down, has one point taken away from him. Generally speaking, most fights, most rounds, are scored about 10-9. 
personally would say that that fight probably gave Barrett the decision by a 10-9 majority on each round. Ladies and gentlemen, Yes, so I wouldn't have been so much of a surprise on Barrett's face there. I don't think you need to be surprised about that. He took that fight all the way, in my opinion. There's Trevor Ambrose there. Well, I expect his cornerman will probably be saying to him, you didn't so much... Or he didn't so much win that fight as you lost it, because I think that... Ambrose really gave that fight away. I don't think he gave enough into it. Good evening ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Eastway Sports Centre in Leighton East London for another action-packed night of entertainment brought to you by the Contact Karate Organisation. The sport you're about to see is called kickboxing. As we get into the first fight, I'll explain to you the rules of the sport. The referee this evening is Mr Bob Riley, who's the Contact Karate Organisation's chief referee. The first fight this evening is going to be a three times two minute round and the first fight from the ring, Aubrey Henry from the Jackass Kong Fu Club, weighing in at 67 kilograms. I said this would be a C-class fight of three times two minute rounds, which means that these fighters are in the novice category neither having any more than about five fights. Thank you ladies and gentlemen. The three three minute round contest. Introducing in the red corner from the Whirlwind Club, Wally James. And Wally James in the red corner there from Whirlwind Kickboxing Club weighing in at 68 kilograms. Robby Henry in his last fight, which took place at the Fairfield Halls in Croydon, knocked out his opponent with a spinning back fist. Very powerful technique, took his opponent right off his feet. So we can expect to see him have a go at using that again tonight, I should imagine. Seconds away. Round one. Okay, away we go. It's round one. Mm. Well, Jane's throwing a low kick there, rather high on the leg of Aubrey Henry. Yeah? Foot sweeps are allowed, but they must be below the bulge of the calf muscle. Fighters are allowed to use all normal boxing punches. Plus the spinning back fist, which you may see in this fight. And all kicks must be above the waist. And they're uh, catching James with a foot sweep. There was the spinning back fist that Aubrey Henry attempted to use there.
James catching him with a nice jab to the face, knocking his head back there. He was a very tough and aggressive fighter. He comes from the Kung Fu Club at Crystal Palace, who is the head instructor there, Mr. Lajos Jackab. He's been teaching Kung Fu and kickboxing in this country now for over 20 years. And James ducking his head down there and covering up. He's a a little rather high sweep there, I would say more of a low kick from Wally James to the leg of Henry's. That's just the warning he got from the referee for that. He doesn't want to do that too often. There's the end of the first round, anyway. Yeah, I'd say that was a fairly even round. I wouldn't give it to either fighter to any great degree. Henry looking quite comfortable in his corner there. to his Henry's left there, that is his, that's his trainer, they just jack up. One of the best known Kung Fu blasters in this country. Second to wait. on his man there trying to get in some punch combinations. A good round high kick from James. He's caught on the arm of Harvey Henry. <laughs> Henry again tries his speciality spinning backwards. And that's the second time though and James is getting the, the second warning from the referee. One more of those and that could be it. So he's going to have to be very careful where he places those foot sweeps. James's head up there with some front kicks to his face. And again, Henry tries that spinning back, just telegraphing it rather well. Though James could see that coming a mile off. And he just simply ducked down and covered up for it. It's a technique that works very well if you throw it in as a combination at the end of the combination, but. It's rather uh, obvious if you just come straight in with it. And Henry trying it again, almost catching James there, but again, I think he saw that one coming. And as I said, Henry knocked his last opponent out with that technique, and he seems to be making every attempt to do it again in this fight as he goes in there with a the jumping front kick to the body of, of Wally James both fighters tend to seem to slow the pace down quite considerably in that round Sponge down by the seconds. He looks quite comfortable, but then, as I say, they didn't do an awful lot in that, that round, so I shouldn't see any reason why either fighter should be blowing too much.
Okay, coming up now for the third and final round of this fight. I would like to say who is ahead at this point. I don't think either fight has done an enormous amount really, so I would say they're probably fairly even. tries that spinning back distance. James just hangs on there. It appears that the referee is again warning James, probably for that sweep again which he just did which is rather high and again he's done it again and that's it now the referee is the referee is disqualified James for those high foot sweeps which are really really basically leg kicks which are not allowed under the rules that are in operation tonight he's had about four warnings which is one more than what is necessary to be given before a fighter can be disqualified so that's the decision that referee Bob Riley has taken. Five warnings the referee has actually given. So the winner there is, by disqualification is Aubrey Henry from the Jack Ab Kung Fu Club in Crystal Palace. As a rather disappointed Wally James, but that's the rule. That's the rules of the game. OK, and there's our next fight of this evening. This is again another C-class fight, three times two minute rounds. And the first fighter entering into the ring there. In the blue corner we have Steve Cooper from the Jack Ab Kung Fu Club. At 72 kilograms. And over in the red corner there, Pat Ryan from Golden Tiger Kung Fu Club. And in at 74 kilograms. This, I think, will be Steve Cooper's second or third fight. As you heard from the announcer there, these C-class fights are scored by the referee. He makes the, the decision as to who's the fighter, who's the winner at the end of this fight. Three two minute rounds, one minute break in between each round. Second down. Round one. at the Fairfield Hall in Croydon but he lost on a fairly close decision so he'd be looking to get a nice win under his belt tonight if he can I don't think I've seen Ryan fight before comes from a good club got some good fighters just getting a warning from the referee there for a bit of a low kick trains under Frank Bowen some fairly good fighters on it. The likes of Mick Bartos. The fighters uh, taking things rather slow get started. It's unusual really for novice class fighters, they tend normally to go steaming in on each other. I guess he's probably been watching the, the more experienced lads. I take a few tips from them. It's 
a rather mundane round. Anyway, neither fighter seems to be even wanting to get in there and make much contact. I just hope they'll stick in a little bit more in the next next couple of rounds. Anyway. It's really difficult, difficult to predict, predict the way uh, novice class fights will go. So until they gain more experience, they tend to uh, come out with a different strategy every time they fight. You can see a guy fight one time, see him again in his next fight, and he can fight completely different. The last fight that Cooper had against Andy Mayo, it was uh, quite a barnstormer. Both fighters went at it solid for three rounds. And then, as I say, we see him coming out in this fight and uh, really taking things relatively easy. Okay, so where we go for the second round? I think the last round would have to have been scored as a draw by the referee. As I say, I don't think either fighter really put in enough to gain anything. And again, Cooper get the warning there for kicking a little bit low. Cooper seeming to be up, up in the pace of the fight a little bit now. Ryan throwing a few punches here and there, but really pulling them a bit too short. And catching Cooper's leg there, that's, a, that's an illegal move under the rules. A fighter is not allowed to catch hold of the, his opponent's leg when he kicks. And the referee quite rightly gave him a, a warning there for doing that. Ryan is tending to avoid contact quite a bit here. He you know, seems to seem to be pulling a little bit too short, not getting in there. Cooper there opening up with a, a good combination of punches to the head of Ryan. And he's, Telling him, well, if you're not going to come in against me, then I'm going to come and take the fight to you. And again, a kick a little bit low again. Didn't have done any damage, but the thing is, is the kicks are supposed to be above the waist, and not below them. Jab of just an attempt to keep Cooper away. Well, that was definitely Cooper's round. Uh, Ryan certainly didn't make any impression of his technique at all, as Cooper caught him with quite a few nice shots in that round. So I'd say definitely that Cooper has taken the fight so far. Ryan is going to have to put a lot more into the next round if he wants to try to sway the referee's decision back towards himself. So I was trained there, Frank Bowen having a word with him. And so as we get the fighters out of their corner now for the third and final round. So we we'll expect back to see Cooper going forward now and taking the fight to Ryan. That was a star last time. And I say he started doing it. Ryan has decided he seems to be waking up a little bit and starting to come back. Well, there was no knockdown there. That was just a just a trip, I think. Yeah, and the referee doesn't do a knockdown, so the fight continues on. Cooper catching Ryan there with what I would say was a rather high, high sweep again. Referee giving him a warning for that. As I said earlier, the sweep must be below the bulge of the calf muscle, otherwise it counts as a leg kick. 
and under the rules that are in operation here tonight, leg kicking is not allowed. Piling up the points now here, with taking the fight to Ryan all the way. Ryan comes back with occasional flurry, but he just doesn't keep it up. Cooper again banging in those roundhouse kicks, low to the midsection of Ryan. Catching him there with a, a right cross, but it seems to have done an awful lot of damage. Ryan bleeding from the nose, so that, that's quite normal. Anyway, well, there's the end. And the referee raises the hand of Cooper, yes, quite rightly so. Cooper took that, in my opinion, by quite a clear majority. So, as I say, after losing his last fight, he's come looking for a nice win. And, He's done it. Started off a little bit slow, both of them, but I think Cooper has done enough to deserve it. Here we go with the next fight of this evening. And we have over in the blue corner, Andy Morgan, the British lightweight champion from the Afan Lido in Wales, weighing in at 64 kilograms. His opponent over in the red corner, all the way from Los Angeles, USA, Ricky O'Kane from the Jet Centre Gym, weighing in at 66 kilograms. Ricky O'Kane is the North American champion. He's ranked number six in the world. Andy Morgan is looking to upset that ranking and get himself rocketed into the top five so that he can eventually go through to have a chance for a world title fight. Not a lot known in this country about Ricky O'Kane. Certainly with a ranking of number six in the world, he's got to be good. Andy Morgan, on the other hand, never been beaten in the kickboxing ring. Dropped the decision to the American Troy Dawson in a three-round fight at one time, but there was a lot of people who were at ringside there and they said that that was just, well, what we call in the trade, basically a stitch-up. So as far as we're concerned, Andy is still yet to be beaten. And as the cane misses with a roundhouse kick to the head of Andy Morgan, and brings Morgan and himself both down to the corner. And Catching Morgan there with a combination of punches and definitely staggering. I think the referee missed that actually because Morgan was definitely hurt there by that, by that combination that the referee didn't give him the eight count. And a combination of roundhouse kick and heel kick from Ricky O'Kane. Touched a cane in training before this fight. Seems to be a kind of a fighter who just waits for his moment and then moves in and gives it all. Okay, and skipping across the interval now, we go straight into round two. In the first round brought quite a surprise with Ricky O'Kane catching Andy Morgan with a combination of punches that put him on the canvas. The referee didn't see it, so he didn't give a eight count, but it was certainly clear to me that he'd staggered Morgan. And he said earlier, Kane so far appears to be a very, very powerful fighter. He picks his shots and certainly, and that's a a fouling move there, and the referee warned McCain about that, holding behind the head while he's uppercutting Morgan. 
And then Cohen throws another roundhouse kick to the head of Morgan. Morgan replying with one of his own. A quite a considerable reach and height advantage over Andy Morgan. Surprising looking at the two that they're in the same weight category actually. the problem with the way in between these two is that Cain catching Morgan with some very very hard uppercuts and left hooks. Mm. Morgan wants to cover himself up a little bit more with this guy otherwise he's going to find himself on the canvas again. As I was saying they had a problem with the way in. It was scheduled to take place the night before but unfortunately Andy Morgan didn't arrive at his hotel in just outside of London until very very late that night. And so it wasn't possible to weigh him in until the following morning. So he's had less time to build himself up after the weigh-in, so maybe he's feeling a little bit weaker than he would like to be tonight. And Morgan holding on to the glove of okay, and the referee warns him for that. And there again, I reckon that was okay as well, without any doubt. And again we skip the interval and go straight in for the third round. I think a Kane caught Morgan there with a, a low kick, it seems to have caught him in the groin. Morgan's obviously hurt as he sits down on the canvas. Just helping Morgan to recover from that and Morgan. And obviously the referee to say that he's okay. So continue on the fight. No warning there given to okay, as that was purely an accidental technique. <laughs> and maybe catching okay in there just as I came came in to kick and hit him with a good right cross to the head. Tough guy though, didn't seem to make an awful lot of difference to him. He wonder just what Morgan has to do in order to make an impression on this man. Okay, he trains at the Jet Center in California, USA. Under the great Benny the Jet Akides, who is in actual fact the world champion in Ricky O'Kane's weight class. So there he is ranked at number six and his, his actual trainer is the actual world champion. Benny Ukides is here tonight at ringside, watching his fighter. And I suppose he should be also taking in the abilities of the rest of the British fighters tonight. And there's one or two who would like to challenge him for his world title. He's definitely so far shown himself to be the stronger man though, especially on the in fighting. Morgan tending just to lean against him whilst the cane is doing all the work. And Morgan complaining to the referee about being pushed down, but it's partly his own fault as he is ducking right his head rather low. And that's the end of that round. And some of the one for a cane in my book. Okay, and where we go now is round four. There's three more rounds to go. Okay, launches a roundhouse kick attack to the head of Andy Morgan and goes sailing through the ropes with it. Well, so far, Okay has certainly showed himself to be quite a considerable amount stronger than Morgan. Morgan's still in there fighting, he's a tough little guy. I think this is probably about the first time that he's actually come against an opponent who he's found to be outclassing him. Certainly there's nobody here in Britain who's ever given him a hard, as, hot, as hard a fight as this one. 
and he's taken on some of the some of the best and beaten them. And that's a that's a bit silly of Morgan doing that. That was a direct and out and out foul against O'Kane there to pick him up and dump him on the canvas like that. Surprises me that the referee doesn't give him a warning for that. I think that's a little bit of frustration in Andy Morgan at just simply not being able to make any impression on this American fighter. I don't know what that guy's made out of. He seems to be just absorbing anything that Morgan throws against him. He's continuing to come back. And he catches Morgan there with a two left hooks and then a right cross. Morgan's still standing up to that. But certainly looked a little bit dazed at first. And powerful left uppercut then and then a right uppercut there into the jaw of Morgan. Morgan's certainly taking some stick in there tonight. Makes you wonder just how good the the guys are above this Ricky okay if he's if he's in fact is this good. Well there's the bell for the end of that round. I should imagine Andy Morgan won't be sorry to be able to sit down and steal there. Hey, hey. And where we go now is round five, and there's a cane opens up there with a roundhouse kick that just misses the face of Andy Morgan. And Morgan coming back with a roundhouse kick to the midsection of OK. And so far as we've seen to the last four rounds, OK is definitely in the lead. And he's shown himself to be one of the, or certainly the toughest opponents that Andy Morgan has ever faced. And he catches Morgan there with a little bit left hook to the side of the head. Morgan is dropping down there, attempting a, a spinning spot sweep, but not quite getting it to come off. And a powerful round has kick there from O'Kane. Hmm. I don't exactly know what O'Kane is attempting there anyway, but seems to be resting his leg on the Morgan shoulders for a minute. Seems to be just looking for that big final punch now, OK, and he's trying to set his man up in order to just bang it in there. And another roundhouse kick comes round to the head of Andy Morgan. Morgan looking rather tired now, his face is very reddened. And Cain's just keeping on in there, banging away. And just misses again with a, with a right hook to the head of Morgan. And Morgan definitely staggering there. He caught one down on the canvas. And the, his corner's actually thrown the, thrown the towel in as well. So, yeah. Well, there was no, certainly no need for the referee to count over Morgan there. He's definitely out. Ladies and gentlemen, let's have a big, big winner. Red corner, Ricky O'Kane.